The primary duty of every priest is to proclaim the gospel of God to all humanity. Those are the words found in uh, the Second Vatican Council, and following those words are two scriptural citations. The first is Mark 16:15, And then Jesus told them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the good news to all creation. The man who believes and accepts baptism will be saved. The man who refuses to believe will be condemned. And then Romans chapter 10, uh, verse 17. Faith comes through hearing, and what is heard is the word of Christ. When I made a uh, retreat in my first years in the major seminary, I remember the retreat master telling us uh, that we should begin as seminarians and continue into our priesthood the practice of getting up every morning and saying ad sum, which was the reply when the name is called out at the ordination ritual. Your name is called and you stand and say uh, in English present. And so in a certain sense uh, I have done that except that I have varied it slightly using the responsorial psalm in today's Mass. Here I am, I come to do your will. Each morning we renew in that way, I think, our priestly commitment, our gift to God, replying, first of all, to his exquisite and splendid gift to us. The importance of preaching is very, very significant. The primary duty, says the Second Vatican Council. However, the Council goes on to say that the Eucharist is the source and apex of the whole work of preaching the gospel. It is in the Eucharistic worship, the Eucharistic assembly of the faithful, that priests exercise in the supreme degree their office when they unite the votive offerings of the faithful to the sacrifice of Christ their head and in the sacrifice of the Mass make present again and apply until the coming of the Lord the unique sacrifice of the New Testament, of Christ offering himself once and for all as the spotless victim to the Father. Preaching is very important. And as a bishop for more than 20 years, uh, one of the primary complaints I would receive about priests, uh, maybe the main one, was the homilies were so awful. It's a sad commentary that uh, sometimes we think we're doing a great job and we're not. Many well-educated lay people uh, don't understand perhaps the difficulty, but maybe we ourselves aren't always as able and as laborious as we should be in constructing and delivering our homilies, our, ser our, ser our sermons. Jesus is, of course, the supreme high priest, and he could keep thousands of people transposed and transfigured and exactly uh, stunned by preaching. So much so they forgot to eat, to go home to sleep. We can't possibly uh, get ourselves to that degree of perfection in preaching, but we have to work at it. I'm always astonished by the fact that in the job description for Lutheran ministers in the Missouri Synod, they have 20 hours a week of sermon preparation, which is, of course, a bit excessive. That's the, all they have for the liturgy, basically. But nonetheless, it's a sign to us that we have to work harder, more diligently, more carefully. If we're not excited and interested, if we're not uh, uh, ourselves stimulated by what we say, the people who listen to us certainly will not be. And we might think that uh, after five years of preaching that we're really swaying them. Uh, uh, we don't hear the grinding of their teeth and the rolling of, see the rolling of the eyes. Here he comes again with the same bag of cliches. To preach properly and correctly, we have to, first of all, be deeply involved in Scripture. We should read the Bible. I'm stunned to know that seminarians sometimes have never even read the whole Bible from uh, Genesis to Revelation should be an annual event for us. 
And even if we get bogged down in Numbers and Leviticus uh, as we journey through the Old Testament, we should steam through. It's God's Word. God's Word in words of men. How important it is. Other things, too, should be as familiar to us as the back of our hand. Not just the code of canon law, but the catechism of the Catholic Church, the big catechism of the Catholic Church, a rich and intense source of homiletic material. How we should work very hard each Monday to put into our hearts what's going to be proclaimed in the Mass the following Sunday and carry it with us as we visit the sick, as we do our catechetical work, as we carry out, let it be refined and generated inside of us. Good commentaries on sacred scripture, not just what we have to professionally know about scriptural studies, uh, but for many people it can be an absolute uh, bore and a drag. But to put the scriptures deeply into our lives with an intensity that will enable us to move hearts in what we say and what we do. We can't psych ourselves up emotionally every time we're preaching, but we have to do the best we can to put that kind of excitement into our lives and into our words and convey it to God's people. It's the saving word of God himself, and we must not shirk from giving it to them in all its beauty, all its grandeur, all its fullness and integrity. Again and again we must labor to be filled with zeal. Sometimes you almost feel like screaming out, my dear people, someone died and left you a fortune beyond your dreams. This is so, can't you understand it? More important than anything else in the world. So preaching should certainly be what we do. Pope Francis said a priest is called to live in the midst of his flock, protecting his people, searching for those who are lost, and serving those in need. He said, the priest must constantly be proclaiming the words of Jesus. He must be a dutiful servant who at the same time listens to his people's needs and builds a church whose doors are wide open, offering a refuge for sinners, a home for the homeless, comfort for the sick, and God's word and joy for all the young. We must do a great job preparing and delivering homilies, not uh, late Friday night or Saturday night scribbling something on a pad. Something more intense and more important is what we are required to do. And we can and should uh, do it unflinchingly and unfailingly with that kind of generosity with which we respond when we get up in the morning. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. It means a great sacrifice, but it's worth more than worth the effort. God will speak to us uh, through, uh, speak to his people through our mouth. Just a few miles from here, uh, in, on a November day in 1863, uh, a great talk was given. It was given by Edward Everett, who at that time was the greatest orator in America. And he talked for two and a half hours. Then he was followed by another talk, Abraham Lincoln, who talked for less than two minutes. Nobody remembers what Everett said. Everybody remembers what Abraham Lincoln said. And so we too must not substitute length uh, uh, for uh, eloquence. A well-constructed six or seven minutes can say more and be carried away more by people than a 20, 25 minute, 45 minute homily. Sometimes it does get excessive even for bishops. One who uh, was preaching said, my watch is broken, does anyone have the time? And somebody volunteered, there's a calendar on the wall right behind you. You're <laughs> We certainly, we certainly uh, uh, must not think that t talking at length is uh, going to be memorable. Most people uh, turn things off after the first 10 minutes of speaking. We should, of course, remember how important it is. It's our primary duty to preach. And, of course, the preaching is no good just with words. If people know that you yourself are living a life that isn't in conformity with what you're saying, or if they even suspect it, uh, what you say, null, void, and you better had not even say it to begin with. We must constantly then be in uh, desire to bring as much sacred eloquence as we can. 
And even if uh, we're talking to the same old four grandmas that are come to our Sunday Mass in some uh, forsaken village, nonetheless, we, we still should be determined uh, to uh, do our very best. Every homily, every sermon can't be a great work of literature. Uh, it can't be a great production. But it's certain, it should certainly be uh, something that represents our best effort. And if we're humble, we should ask others, pastor of the parish maybe, or someone knowledgeable about how we're doing, and listen to uh, corrections about uh, what we are saying. Uh, sometimes we can say things that are true, but they come out harshly and coarsely. They come out in a way that's not persuasive at all. If we are, as we should be, the mouthpiece of Jesus, we must bring the fullness of what he revealed to us in our homilies. Obviously, we can't say everything. Better to say a few things well and have them remembered. But if we do that, uh, he will assist us. And uh, a devout priest should be on his knees for a, a few moments at least before every single homily, asking God the Holy Spirit for inspiration, asking the Blessed Virgin and the saints for their intercession. And then afterwards, in case there is some uh, reasonable uh, suspicion of success in the preaching, to be sure to thank the Lord for what he has done and thank Mary and the saints for their prayers and their intercession. Very few words were spoken in Scripture by the Blessed Virgin Mary, but what they are are powerful and eloquent. And of course, the, the uh, last words, uh, the obituary, so to speak, of her words were the ones that uh, also should be in our life. Uh, do whatever he tells you. Let uh, then uh, the primary duty of preaching be uh, a joyful and happy uh, work of our priesthood. And let us make our homilies and our sermons worthwhile. Let us uh, listen to those in the past who have preached with extraordinary eloquence and while we need not copy what they say, nor try to imitate their methodology or way of preaching, our own uniqueness has to come out in what we are saying and preaching. But nonetheless, we can learn a great deal from them. Uh, there was, uh, in my younger years, when television was just coming in, I'm so old I remember before there was television, uh, the great and uh, wonderful programs of uh, Fulton Sheen. Uh, at that time, he was at first uh, uh, Monsignor Sheen from Catholic University. He used to preach on the Catholic Hour on the radio. And then he became Bishop Sheen, Auxiliary of New York, and Director of the Propagation of the Faith for the United States. And he had a television program, of course, in the early days of television, that had the highest of all the Nielsen ratings. And the other networks didn't know what to do. They put uh, Milton Berle and uh, also Sid Caesar, uh, contrary to him, but he always, he always had the highest Nielsen ratings for the whole country. And uh, when they had a reunion of uh, uh, old television personalities, uh, uh, Fulton Sheen said, uh, people wonder why I had the highest Nielsen ratings. I'll tell you why. He said, Caesar and Burl worked for Texaco and the Texaco Star, but I worked for Superstar. <laughs> I think that uh, uh, who we work for and who we speak for uh, should influence our preparation and our delivery of our sermons, our preaching. We uh, uh, sometimes don't realize that in the Super Bowl, uh, those uh, two-minute or one-minute advertising slots, to construct them, those companies sometimes spend $30 million. They hire psychiatrists, psychologists. They hire, they go through innumerable people, a tone of voice. What are you, uh, how, to, how to sell whatever it be, a, a glass of beer or a, 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 some kind of a hemorrhoid solution or something. <laughs> and and, and uh, it, it's so much for this commercial thing. What about the Word of God? What about that? I worked, uh, taught at St. Francis Seminary in Milwaukee and was very learned. Uh, Monsignor who taught dogmatic theology for many years there and very famous and a very wonderful 
uh, person, but given to sarcasm and sometimes bitter sarcasm. And he would tell the seminarians sometimes, dental students seem more interested in a rotten tooth than you are in God's holy word. So we have to kind of wonder whether we're giving all the attention we should uh, to God's word and to our proclaiming of God's word. Faith comes from hearing. And uh, that is what we do when we proclaim uh, gospel, the good news. We instill, we uh, not only instill, but we reinforce and bring back into the hearts of the people we're entrusted to that wonderful thing called faith. Amen.